This video is sponsored by DistroKid. All right, mega super pro tip here. Let's keep this short and simple. I've been trying to use the push, um, or I guess push two. There's no the, Houston, that's for you for scolding me last time in case you're watching. I've been using push two as my MPC. Just been trying hardcore to just use this and I hated um, sampling into push two because it's you're sampling into your uh, DAW, right? Ableton Live. Um, and the one thing I loved about my MPCs is I could just take like a headphone out and sample directly into my MPC, whatever my computer was playing. That's great, my cell phone, whatever. But I realized I'm using the Focusrite Claret 8 Pre. Here's another quick note I'm realizing now is that I, <laughs> is that the Claret that I'm using is the Thunderbolt, right? And this loopback feature doesn't work on um, the newer Clarets. It doesn't work on the USB and or the USB-C. Um, it only works on the Thunderbolt one. So uh, in case you're looking to pick one up, maybe one of the older ones might be better for you. Hopefully they bring this feature back. And I guess full disclosure, I technically work for Focusrite. I work more on the Novation side. I don't really know too much about the Focusrite stuff. Um, yeah, I, that spiels over. Um, and what's great about this Focusrite is if I go into Focusrite control, I have what's called loopback, right? So this loopback here, it's probably a little small. Sorry, it's hard to see, but I can choose what, what loopback is playing. And loopback lives on channels 11 and 12. So what's super tight about this is if I close Focusrite control, I go back into Ableton Live here, I'll use push and I'll say add a track and I want to add just a regular audio track, default track, load. And I'll press mix twice, then go to input and routing, and I'll select my input to 11 and 12. This is what whatever my computer is actually playing. I'll leave it to off so I don't blow my ears out because that would create crazy feedback, right? But check this out. So this is here. I'm gonna go and use, um, oh, a uh, word on this and that. Actually, you know what? I'll mention it now. So loopback is something that some of my coworkers have been using with mixed results. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. Um, it's kind of expensive. It's like a hundred bucks, but it basically allows you to do the same thing and send audio um, everywhere. You could probably do this with Soundflower as well, which is an aggregate. So there's a ton of different ways to do this. I just personally like using my Focusrite because it's already built in. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And this might be a little weird, but I'm going to be sampling my own video. But check this out. I'm going to go ahead and play this. Actually, let me make sure my audio is set. Okay, audio is set. So let's say I want to play this, right? You can see when I press play here, it's already playing here on inputs one and two. Right, whatever I'm doing here. Jeez, that sounds awful. There we go. So I'll press and hold this, go to session, hit record. It's going to start recording this. And I'll just scan around in a YouTube video. Oh, I see an, maybe something over here. Every one, just by holding this and turning this, these have a sl So, stop talking, bro. All right, so boom, got my sample and boom, it's there, easy. This is kind of convoluted at times, but once you get used to the workflow, it's really quick. Now that I have that clip recorded in here, I'll just say convert. What do I want to convert this to? A simpler. And this is going to be the uh, Ableton Live's version of a sampler. Now that that's there, I can go to note mode, right, and play this however I want. And I'm going to go ahead and hit simpler and turn the global gain up so I can get a better view on the transients. You can see right there, I kind of started clipping my voice, but whatever, I'm not going to use my voice. So that's done. I'll go back to main mode. I want to slice this by, um, you can either do region or manual. It doesn't matter. I'll just do it manually. I'll play this back here. That's the first slice. I can see where I want another slice. These are all going to be really rough. There's one, another one. Uh, jump around, boom, boom. So this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and nudge this over. So, so, so. I like that. I'm gonna change the endpoint. 
right? And you can kind of go back and adjust a bunch of your slices. But what's crazy is, if I was to do this with like an actual song, um, you can chop up a song really, really crazily and really, really fast, just like you would on an NPC. This probably wasn't like the best example. I'm just trying to not get pulled um, or get the video pulled off of YouTube, right? Because I don't want to trick some algorithm. Like if I were to go to, let's say, um, Spotify, maybe I can sample my own track and let's do this again. So if I was to sample something else again, you go back to mix and I'm going to go back to our audio track, but solo it. So this stuff doesn't play because all the other chops that I might've made will play and be resampled. You can use loopback to resample stuff. So boom, that track is sampled. I'll go to Ricky Tinez, which of course is just me. And let's just say celebrate life. Let me turn that down, it's a little loud. Cool, so let's take this back to the beginning. Boom, I'll just say record something new. Go to clip. Awesome, let's say, right, cut that short. Now that's this, now that's this playing, same thing. I can say convert to simpler. And that's now here, go to note mode. And of course, turn solo off. Right, set the start point. Right, and you basically just repeat the whole process over again. It's nuts, it's kind of crazy how fast and simple this can be. And my favorite reason for doing this is I can just sit here and chop samples up all day, watch movies, sample movies, play some jazz records, sample some jazz. And then I can go back later down the line and then go to, let's say, um, user library. And I can say, all right, let's go to my presets and I can save all of these as a simpler, right? So if I go here and let's say um, this King James chop, right? Hopefully I don't get pulled for this, but like this is a, right? Right, so I can then throw some dope drums down and say, okay, you know what? Let me see what chops I have already made from way back in the day. It's almost like when you separate the sound design and when you're actually making music. But this is, what's crazy with this is you can actually do one more thing with Push 2 is you can actually take this a step further and kind of use this in like a SP1200 mode where each sample has its own parameters, which is really, really fun to use. But before I get into that, I wanna give you a quick tip on how I have been actually releasing a ton of my music, for example, all of these, with, today, with the help of today's video sponsor, DistroKid. So I've been using DistroKid for ages now. I've done five releases on DistroKid and full transparency, not long ago, I wanted to see if there was a better option and I searched, I really, really tried and I ended up realizing that DistroKid did it all for me. Then after deciding to stay, um, they went ahead and added a ton of features, which is honestly exactly what I was looking for. They packed a bunch of new things in their goodies menu, like ways to, uh, actually, you know what, here, let me show you. Like ways to promote yourself or how to get verified on Spotify as an artist and even this weird orange brain dude named Dave that tells you weird statistics about your music. Wait, what? Another awesome tool that they've added is Spotify Canvas. Have you ever clicked on a Spotify song and seen that dope short video clip that plays? Well, DistroKid now helps you out by allowing you to add Canvas to any of the songs that you've released with them through the Spotify Artist app, and they will also help you get a Spotify Artist app. I've also been using Hyperfollow for all that allow me to share an image with the link to follow and set a reminder for when my next release will go live with people who want to listen to my tracks, whether they're on Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, what have you. Another fun thing is you can actually check out your stats and see how many plays you've been getting as well as manage multiple artists. Oh, also, I think I'm paying for the Musician Plus plan, which might have a couple more things than the basic plan. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but you can use the link down below to check for more info. And honestly, there's so much I like about DistroKid that it could be its own video, but I don't want to take up all your time. They're dope. I'm super happy to be on their sponsor list. 
Um, you, I, I, because I've been a paying customer since before they even reached out and I still pay for it. It's super cheap. So yeah, in case you're interested, use the link down below. Um, you'll get 7% off your first year and I'll get a little kick pack because you know, that just helps support the hangs and, uh, yeah. All right, let's get back into it. So last but not least, once you are here and you have your chop ready to go, what is nuts is after you've chopped it up, you can hit convert one more time and then it'll say convert to drum rack. And this is great because if you were to sample and then do the slices with the transients and say convert to MIDI slices or whatever it's called, it does this weird thing where you gotta select through all these weird presets that don't make any sense and they start doing all these crazy crossfade loop things. But if you go from an audio to a simpler, slice it up and then go from simpler to a drum rack and then you go to notes oops each sample now has its own parameters so check this out i can say slice two what is slice two going to do i can transpose it right and i can transpose this and everything has its own parameters so say i like this I can even say duplicate this sample here and then change this up again and then duplicate, oops, not quantize, duplicate this here and then right. So you can start building. I mean, that was a absolutely horrendous sound to show that, but you get the idea. You can actually build this and put this into this weird almost uh, and Sonic EPS 16 plus style um, mode where each slice has its own individual patterns or the SP 1200 mode where you have one slice, but then you set the pitches and you can set the filters because you can add devices to each of these slices. It gets nuts. It gets really, really crazy. And it's just so fun to be able to sample whatever your computer is playing. So, yep. I hope you found this video helpful. Push to has been awesome and I really like it. It does do some weird trippy things where notes hang and this and the next and blah, blah, blah. It might be a computer thing. It might be a push thing. It might be a RAM thing. It might be an Ableton thing. Who knows? I don't really know, which is why I ended up ordering a push two. Actually meant to say MPC live two. Oh yeah. Push two, which should be coming in soon. I hope so. Um, I'm really stoked to check it out, but, uh, yeah, until then again, shout out DistroKid. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video and allowing me to do what I do. Shout out to you for coming by and kicking it as you always do. And I hope to see you again next week. If you want to support the channel, feel free to check out some merch, but you kicking it is more than enough. And until then, you already know the drill, share the love, share the knowledge, knowledge is power. Peace.